first inductee into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame in 2022 is the third player from season two to be inducted and the first player from that season to be inducted since our inaugural year back in 2020. David Oldfield lasted 21 days in Vanuatu by dominating the game in all the important aspects, socially, physically, and strategically. His ability to fit in with all the alliances, as well as manipulate his way through many tricky situations, led to him being labelled the Puppet Master by that season's host Ian Dicko Dixon, as well as other nicknames such as the Lord Mayor of the Jungle and the Seventh Wonder of the Ancient World by many fans who watched the season. David was also a renowned chef on the show, providing constant sustenance to his fellow tribe mates and navigated the tricky conditions on season two to put himself in prime position to win. However, due to the infamous twist at the end of that season that saw two players return to the game with only three players left in the game at that time, David unfortunately fell just short, finishing in fifth place and becoming the third jury member of the season. Now, David narrowly missed out on being inducted into the Hall of Fame in both 2020 and 2021, but due to a strong expert panel vote in 2022, as well as a solid fan vote, David has finally achieved his deserving status as an inductee of the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame to cement his legacy as a true legend of the franchise. To celebrate his induction into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame, I am thrilled to be joined by the Honourable David Oldfield to accept his induction today. David, first of all, thanks for joining me and congratulations on your induction. Oh, most kind. I'm sure it's an incredible privilege for you to have me here this evening. Always, always Mm. a privilege, no matter what context I get to speak to you, David. You you know it very well. I I mean, as I said... The the privilege is all mine, Ben. No, this is a a wonderful, a wonderful thing, and I'm I'm very pleased to have been included. Well, you pretty much just answered my first question, because I was going to say, you narrowly missed out on the very first two years, both times very close to being inducted. Third time lucky, I guess, David, but what does it mean to you to be finally recognised as being inducted into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame? Well, look, I was really chuffed uh, a few years ago where by accident I found that I'd been um, voted very highly by uh, people who watch the program uh, as far as the Australian survivors were concerned. I think out of about 80 or so, 77, 70, 80, something around that number, I was listed as the fourth best survivor. And when I saw that, uh, I was really super chuffed because I was – higher than Guy was, and Guy, of course, who has, you know, my greatest respect and admiration and won my season. Um, so, you know, I was really very, very happy to see that, that there'd been an acknowledgement that I must have been doing something right. Um, to now have this happen, look, it's fair to say that I've had the wonderful experience and good fortune of being awarded many things during the course of my very, very long life, my extensive life into seniorhood and, you know, including um, national sporting titles and a whole range of things. Uh, But this is as good, if not better than all of those things because of the tremendous enjoyment that I had of being engaged with Survivor. Well, on that, you've done a lot of reality TV shows outside of Survivor, of course, but Survivor, your very first appearance on a reality show. What was it that drew you to accepting the invitation when it was offered to you? Well, look, I was retiring from um, being a politician at the time, and I thought, well, you know, this might give me a bit of a bounce into some kind of career otherwise, you know, as I, as I sort of finally get out of politics. So I had planned on retiring. I hadn't actually announced it at the time, but I had planned on retiring the following year. So that sort of made sense. And it was just appealing to do something that wasn't, I thought, political or in any sense related to what I had been doing and all of the sorts of things that I'd done. Um, at the time, of course, they told us that it was the mole. They didn't tell us that it was Survivor. So I actually accepted um, in the sense of uh, being willing to do the show on the basis it was the mole. And then they sort of came back and said, ah, oh, you know, actually it's, it's not the mole, it's Survivor. And I thought, well, okay, well, I hadn't, as you know, I hadn't actually ever seen Survivor. I'd seen snippets, but I'd never seen a series or, or even a full episode. So I thought, ah, oh, give it a go. And with that, you obviously thrived out there eventually. So when you found out it was Survivor, not the mole, did you create yourself a strategy? Did you go in there with a, a plan of some sort when you actually did land there in Vanuatu? 
I just, I just decided to try and do something that I hadn't ever been bothered with before, and that was to get along with people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still trying that? You're still trying to do that after all these years as well? No, I've, I've done full circle now. I just don't really want to have much to do with people. I'm not, I'm not trying to not get along with them. I'm just trying to avoid them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd rather spend time with animals. No offence to anybody, uh, but, you know, I just uh, – yeah, I, these last few years have, have caused me to you know, take a fairly dim view of the human race. And whilst I know wonderful people and have you know some you know, terrific friends that I love, and of course my own children who I, I love to death and would give my life for, um, I'm sort of trying to step back from social engagement. Um, I, I don't really want to have an opinion on anything these days outside my needs and that which is primarily the needs of my children. So, look, I just decided that I'll just see how it goes. I, I watched probably an episode, maybe slightly more than that, or two parts of two episodes uh, before actually departing for Vanuatu. So I had some concept of how it all worked, but I really was a newbie and had very little idea about it. Um, I did decide that I'd try and make myself as useful as possible in the sense of uh, being able to cook perhaps and make something out of the meager meals that we had access to or were given as rewards. And I made the point of never wanting to really expose unnecessarily that I could swim or run or anything else and, until, you know, I absolutely had to. So I tried to sort of fly fairly low below the radar, which is difficult, you know, given that it was me. Um, and everybody, of course, sadly had a particular idea of me going in, whereas I didn't really know any of them particularly. I knew, I knew um, of course, of the existence of Guy Leach, and I'd met him once previously, uh, very briefly, which he wouldn't have remembered, I wouldn't have imagined. And I was aware of Wayne Gardner. Um, I knew Imogen through um, mutual friends, but I didn't really know her. I think I'd probably also met her once. The others were completely unknown to me, whereas I was, I'm sure they pretty much had an opinion of me in the first place. So there wasn't the greatest level of ease to fly below the radar, but I, that was my strategy. Fly below the radar, make myself useful, don't expose uh, any capacity or ability that I might have unless it's you know, absolutely threatening and necessary. But on that, being a politician obviously brings with it a large set of skills that perhaps are very useful in a game like Survivor, and it really does seem that it is a profession that is well suited to Survivor. Do you feel that having those types of skills used in your political career helped navigate, say, the social aspect of Survivor? No, um, because whilst I agree with you, um, you know, my view of politicians is that the skills that relate to being a politician as opposed to being a diplomat, the skills relating to be a politician are sadly duplicity, dishonesty, um, and a capacity to basically be a fundamental liar um, and obfuscate everything that may get in your way and remove any obstacle to reach a goal. Uh, that's not how I am generally. You know, I'm, I'm fundamentally an honest person and I don't like to manoeuvre in those fashions. So I don't really know how successful it might be seen that I was as a politician. I think, I, I think as a politician, I could have done a lot more, especially for myself, had I been willing to be your average duplicitous, useless, self-serving, self-seeking politician. Had I actually had all of those mannerisms and characteristics as opposed to skills because i i've never thought dishonesty was a skill um so had i had all of those things i may have been uh personally more successful as a politician and maybe i could have even done better on survivor i mean you'll be familiar with the fact that i played it absolutely straight down the line with everybody i didn't try and betray people i didn't try and you know, be sneaky or fool people or, or make alliances that I wouldn't keep. I was particularly straight with Imogen and, oh, goodness, the other young ladies, well, she's probably not so young, Nicole. lady, she's a grandmother by now. Uh, Nicole, um, 
you know, I was very straight with them. So I was not at all political in that sense. Outside of the, the gameplay aspect, Vanuatu as a location, uh, you know, you mentioned the cooking side of things, but just everything about that location seemed to fit very well. You were able to speak pidgin English and everything along <laughs> those lines uh, that really helped you adapt to the game. I mean, what was it about Vanuatu that you seemed to just thoroughly adapt to so easily? Well, I'm I'm fairly adaptable to the jungle because I've spent quite a lot of time in the jungle because I have uh, because I'm a you know uh, have a great personal interest in World War II. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the jungle, so I've crawled through previously Japanese Japanese occupied caves and fortifications, and you know through places like Palau and Karor and Saipan and Gua and um, you know Guadalcanal and and various islands in the Solomons with that. So I've spent a lot of time in the jungle. I'm very comfortable in the jungle. I'm very comfortable in the outdoors. Um, I'd been to Vanuatu 13 times wow. prior to that because, of course, my interest in in diving and diving in particular World War II shipwrecks. So I had been to Vanuatu so, so many times. So I was familiar with the country and the people. Basically, it's your home ground. It's a home ground advantage for David Oldfield. Well, it was it was from a diving point of view, but we didn't really have a whole lot of diving involved. But you know, I'm I'm comfortable outdoors. I'm comfortable outdoors. Season two is obviously infamously, infamously known for the twist that saw Guy and Justin, of course, come back into the game, ultimately go on to win. I mean, reflecting on that now, do you think had that twist not have happened or happened earlier, and they were still able to be voted out? Do you think? if it was you, uh, Nicole, Imogen, final three, that you would have won that game? I think that it's, there's always a difficulty. Once it got down to Nicole, Imogen and me, there was always the difficulty of getting through Nicole and Imogen, which required you know, me to then win an immunity and, and force their hand where that was concerned. So the odds were in their favour with the three. When the five, when we were back to an, a five scenario with the introduction of uh, or reintroduction of Guy um, and um, Justin, goodness, Justin, Justin Melvy, when that happened, uh, it also should have been pretty straightforward for us to get back to the other three. As you know, I'd explained all of that to the girls, and that, in some respects, caused me a problem because they were threatened by the fact that I'd worked it all out before the two of them arrived. Before it all happened, I'd worked out what was happening just based on counting the days. And because I knew that, that worked against me, which was crazy. And the girls thought that they would somehow outsmart the whole situation and get rid of me. And in doing that, balanced out the votes against themselves and just got rid of them themselves in fast order straight away after me. So, Yes, there was a chance for me to get it, get to the final two um, before Guy and Justin were uh, reintroduced. And yes, there was still a chance, a good chance for me to do that afterwards. But I was let down. I like to think of it a combination of stupidity and betrayal. Well, at the end of the day, David, of course, you won three of the five individual immunities that you were able to uh, take part in. So high chance that you could have uh, bagged one of those last two there at the end to uh, to get you there. So I was in with a chance. It's one of those things that sadly we'll never know, but I was certainly I was certainly in with a chance and certainly Guy, from what I have seen and heard, was of the view that I was well placed. So for Guy to feel that then Yes, you know, he's, he's very well placed to judge because he's so good at it himself and was so familiar with the entire aspect of the game you know, from start to finish. And how do you think you would go on Modern Survivor and do you think you could get as far as you did the first time you played? So hard to know. So hard to know. Um, it would be difficult for me because of my family circumstances to even make a decision or, or be in a position to go. But it is, it's really hard to know. Really hard to know. I'm certainly in um, as good or, or better shape, but, you know, I am older. Brain probably is a bit slower. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I'd work on all that before I went. So uh, it's so hard to know. It's so hard to know. Well, they've got your number. We know you're on I'm a Celebrity, so we know Channel well, 10 has your number there. 
David. But bear in mind, of course, that you know, reality doesn't work like it did. Uh, mm. Reality doesn't really work at all anymore because it's not reality anymore. It's, it's a highly produced scenario with outcomes that are, in many respects, predetermined. So they work out who they really want to keep going on as the show progresses. We didn't really have much, if any, of that when Survivor was being done. You know, and I've done shows since where the networks were determining who was going to go forward based on, you know, who worked on the network and who they wanted to be on camera every week. Now, before we let you go, David, obviously this is probably an answer that you could sit here for a while and give us a lot of different things, given that the time of us inducting you, it's been 16 years since we've seen you on Survivor. But brief overview, what's life like for David Oldfield now and uh, what you've been up to since Survivor? Look, uh, there's no point being... um, hiding any of it to a degree. It's been extremely difficult, Ben. It's been extremely difficult. You know, I'm a a primary custodial um, single father. I have um, two boys. I was going to say little boys, but they're young boys that are not little. My my just turned 12 year old has just hit six feet. Wow. Um, So he is like eight, nine. He's nine inches taller than I was at his age. Wow which is kind of scary. So we don't really want him nine inches taller than me because I'm over six foot two. So <laughs> is he a basketball uh, player, David? Is he got well, a boomer's the, potential? No, he is playing basketball and, and doing okay. But I think he's a, he's more of a rugby player. Um, so yeah, great second row performer in rugby and tremendous in a line out, of course, because he's the tallest kid by a long shot. And my other little boy is 10 and he hasn't had his major growth spurt yet, but he's like five foot three, which is tall, about the same size or slightly taller than I was at his at, at 12. So he's on track for the same sorts of heights. They're probably going to be about six, six each at least. So wonderful. I have two, the two amazing boys, but yeah, it's a very traumatic time, you know, divorce and years of, of legal and, you know, horrendous, like I can't even begin to count. I can, but the count, the cost of divorce. And in my case, it was um, a choice that I made between my children and and my wife who I really didn't want to divorce, but that's how it is. Um, So I can't get too far into that except to say it's been a very traumatic time. I'm healthy I'm mentally traumatized, but I'm responsible for the future of two little boys who live with me and want that as a situation. And so I have to do my very, very best, Ben, in everything I do. I have to get up. I have to make sure I get enough sleep. I have to eat right. I work out about five times a week. I'm very, very conscious of my own health in every respect, mentally and physically. But um, hasn't been a great time for many years. Not sure what it's going to be like. And the future is something which is quite uncertain, but I'm always working on it because I have this vast responsibility. If it wasn't for the boys, I'd quite happily just saddle up my horse, fill up saddlebags and ride off into the sunset somewhere or tow a caravan around Australia and pick up grey nomad chicks. That so it's a lifestyle, definitely. Perhaps it's, a, it's a lifestyle. As yeah. a Hall of Famer, that might help you once the boys hit 18 and move out of home, David. So, Come over here and have a sherry, dear. Exactly. Over by the campfire. Come and have a sherry with me. <laughs> All um, right. I, I, I think um, that will work into your favour then, uh, adding yeah. to that there. Uh, I, I do hope the fact now that you've been able to uh, add this to your resume, David, can add a bit of light to obviously a a bit of a difficult period in your life. I know on behalf of everybody at the hall of fame, the expert panel, the fans and everybody who is interested in this, it is an honor to be able to induct you and to cement your legacy of your time on Australian survivor and celebrate that occasion. We do have a couple of goodies that we will of course send out to you as well to celebrate this occasion, David, but from everyone here, as I said, congratulations. And we definitely do appreciate your time to uh, help celebrate your time on survivor today. Oh, thank you, Ben. I can't really say too much to, uh, in the sense of explaining how much, how happy I am about this. Um, because really it was my favorite of what was my first reality TV show. It was my favorite of all reality TV shows. Uh, I'm sad to say, I'm not sure the situation could ever be replicated again. Uh, but you know, I was ready to start straight over from the moment that show finished. I enjoyed it so, so very much. It will be with me forever as a, a wonderful, wonderful memory. And to be recognized as you and everybody have, and I'm you know, extraordinarily grateful 
that it has happened. And thank you. I, I appreciate the perseverance of everyone involved to get me there as they did. So thank you to everybody who helped make that happen, to everybody who voted, and for those who have, well, perhaps seen me in a light that I maybe didn't even know myself.